Smoky Ribs. Today we're up here at the Bottoms Up Hatchery and Rabbitry. Alright, today we're going to be doing a Smoky Rabbit and Sausage Gumbo. And I'm also going to be doing a uh, Boston Butt Roast. And I got something special I'm going to show you with that. Might be doing it in a, in a separate recipe. But uh, it's going to be a, a stuffed cornbread. Okay, stuffed with pulled pork, jalapenos, cheese, good stuff. All right, we'll be back. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is uh, trim a little of this excess fat off the back of this Boston bud here. Hang on to this fat. I'll show you later what you can do with that. Okay, now you take just plain yellow prepared mustard. You want to rub this in on both sides real good. Make sure to get it on the sides all over. Mustard, uh, it does a couple of things actually. Not only will it help your seasonings hang to the meat better, it will also uh, it will, will help it in the crusting and, and the making of the bark. And also, it's vinegar based, so it will actually help the seasonings to penetrate the meat somewhat. Okay, today I decided to use this uh, sweet and smoky rub. I normally make my own, but I'm going to go ahead and use this. I read the ingredients, and it uh, has just about everything I would normally put in one. So, rub this in really good. Actually, don't rub it so much as patting it in. They say that rubbing this kind of tears up the surface of the meat, so we'll go along with that. Let's go ahead and, and coat this very well, all sides. Okay, we got a whole rabbit here that we're going to season. First thing you want to do is add a little salt and pepper. Both sides. Cracked black pepper. Alright, I have a uh, I have some Twist and Shout by Tango Spice Company. It's actually a little sample pack. I ordered some of the Midnight Espresso a while back, and he included a few samples of his other spices. And uh, this sound really good. I think it would go real good with rabbit, poultry, really just about anything you want to use it on. Got two of these rabbits. I'm showing you how I'm doing this, and then we're going to get them all ready. Get them on the smoker. Okay, this is the uh, second rabbit. You might hear some roosters crowing in the background. Like I said, we're at Bottoms Up Hatchery and Rabbitry. Anyway, I've already salt and peppered this. This is the second rabbit. Cut the legs already off of this for, for another cook, but uh, we're going to smoke them separate right beside this part here. One thing you'll notice while I'm making this gumbo is that I season every element as I go the meat, the trinity, everything. Anything that needs to be seasoned will be seasoned as I go. And what that does is get gets it pretty close to where you want it. You might have to adjust it right there at the end. That second rabbit, we're gonna go ahead and season it up too. All right, we're up here at Bottoms Up Hatchery. This is Derek Jones. That happens to also be my oldest son. And, um, I'm going to post a link on this YouTube video to Bottoms Up Hatchery's Facebook page. Y'all go check him out. He, uh, he actually can take orders anywhere in the U.S. if you're interested in some of these chicks. 
And uh, anyway, you, you'll have to talk with him about that. You got anything to say, Derek? Uh, yes, this is uh, we raise uh, Rhode Island Reds heritage breed uh, that date back to the 1890s. Uh, we're one of the few hatcheries, in, even in the southeast, that has the heritage breed still to this day. Most of your breeds nowadays in the Rhode Island Reds are production breeds. Uh, we also are raising some of the finest game cocks around. If uh, you're interested in exhibition purposes, uh, there's a lot of shows around the country, and it's uh, becoming a big thing. Uh, city dwellers that wants to better raise their own eggs, the bannies are great for that because they're small they make very little noises we also raise california and new zealand mixed rabbits there are a standard meat breed rabbit that creates a better bone and meat ratio uh, you can check us out on our facebook uh, facebook forward slash bottoms up homestead uh, or you can visit us on our website that should be up about a week and a half now at www.bottomsuphomestead.com. Okay, we got our meat loaded up here. I'm going to be monitoring this uh, cook with this eye grill here. This is a Bluetooth enabled dual probe thermometer. I have an app on my iPhone that I'm able to monitor the temperatures. It will also alert me with any alarm of my choice as to when this uh, Boston butt reaches 100, one, about a 195 degrees, 190, 190 to 195. The rabbit meat over here I'm looking for about a 160 degrees in its thigh. We'll also take a few uh, readings in various places, and uh, it should be done at that, that temperature. Now down here, I have a, another little digital wireless thermometer that I'm just strictly monitoring the uh, temperature of the, of the smoker. All right, we're going to close this lid up and begin this cook. Okay, one thing I uh, failed to mention... I have these below the grill. I have enough in there to catch all the drippings from the meat. That will aid in the cleanup of this grill. And one of them, I've got water poured in to add some humidity and steam to the grill as to not dry out the meat. Important. Okay, also to this smoker, we're going to be adding the sausage that we're going to use in this gumbo. This here is a uh, home smokehouse pecan smoked sausage garlic. Okay. And we're also going to be using Savoy's Andouille Sausage. We're going to put these in a the smoker. Yeah, they've already been smoked, but we're going to do what they call twice-smoked sausage. Okay, this rabbit and sausage is getting ready to come off. We're going to go ahead and start our gumbo. The Boston butt, we're sitting about 157 last time I looked. Still got quite a ways on it. All right, let's go to the chopping block. Okay, I got a little help in the kitchen today. Derek's going to go ahead and uh, take all the meat off the bones on all this rabbit meat, and we're going to dice up the sausage. Getting ready to start a roux here in just a few minutes, too. Okay, we're getting ready to start this roux. Got equal parts of uh, oil and all-purpose flour. Just plain vegetable oil and all-purpose flour. We're going to cook this on a low heat until we get the brownness that we desire, which is going to be a very dark, almost the color of a Hershey's bar. Darker the better for a gumbo. Get all these lumps out of here. Another thing I do right from the start is I season the roux some. You don't want to overdo it. Just get it started. A little salt. A little cracked black pepper.
take your uh, your beater here, beat this in until you get all the lumps out of it, and it's nice and smooth. Just like that. Now, I have I have a Cajun rooster. You have got to stir this constantly. I have cooked roux for right at an hour before, usually about three beers worth. So anyway, we're just going to sit here and stir this continuously till we get to desired color. I'll be checking back and forth periodically and show you the change in color as we go. Okay, we're already starting to change color here a little bit. Like I said, you got to constantly stir this. With this rooster with the flat edge, it allows me to scrape the bottom really good and that's really what you're doing is keeping the bottom scraped and moving at all times. If you burn this, it, it, you can't use it. You got to throw it out and start over. So hence, you want to do it at a very low flame. Like I said, it's going to take about an hour from when I started. I've been probably stirring this for at least 15 minutes. And we're just now starting to see a color change. But uh, we'll be back as it continues to darken. Okay, as you can see, it's steadily getting dark. We're not there yet, though. Not by a long shot. All right, if you can see the deep color here, we're still not quite there, but it's very important that you really watch it at this stage here. I've got this about as low as I can go. I'm cooking on a gas stove here at my son's, but uh, we're not there yet. With a roux, you want to get it almost to the point of burning, but, but don't cross that threshold. If you do, you burn it. Okay, this is what you're looking for. Look how dark that is. Not burnt, just right. Okay, what I have here is an oil separator for gravies, roux, and such. I don't know if you can see it, but all the oil has settled to the top. All you do is just pull on this handle, and all the roux is going to come out the bottom, just like so. Once you get close to where the oil is, just let go of the lever. About right there. Okay. Now we have, it, it don't get rid of all the oil, but it gets rid of a big portion of it. Okay, I'm bringing the heat back up on this just enough to where I can saute the Trinity, which is, uh, let's see, I got two onions chopped. I believe uh, one bell pepper maybe, was it a bell pepper and a half? Or one bell pepper and about four stalks of celery. We're gonna add some garlic to this, but that's gonna come right there at the end, just enough to sweat them to let it release its oils. Be right back. All right, I just added the Trinity into the uh, roux. We're just gonna stir this around until all the vegetables begin to wilt. They're releasing their flavors into this roux. We're gonna put the garlic in right at the end of this, maybe the last minute. Then we're gonna transfer it over into a big gumbo pot. We'll be back. Okay. These have wilted pretty good. We're going to go ahead and add this garlic in. Let it go about another minute. Also, uh, the vegetables that were cut up, the trinity for this, was also seasoned, salt and peppered, prior to adding to the roux. I'm seasoning as I build all the layers to this gumbo. Okay, we're going to go ahead and transfer the roux and the trinity over into this pot here. Uh, where is a pot holder? That thing is hot. All right, make sure to scrape all these, every bit of it out of there. All right, now we're gonna take cold water and we're going to slowly add it into this pot as we build. I'm not going to give you a, a set amount of water to add. It's more of a fill thing. You're going to start off with a small amount to mix all this roux. Make sure it doesn't lump up. 
and then from there you're just going to keep adding water till you get it the consistency and thickness that you like. All right, let's start with a couple of cups here. I've got the fire off right now, by the way. I, I want to mix this in good before we start bringing heat into it. Oh, yeah, that's doing real good. All right, once I get this built up to where I want it, I'm also going to add in about five of the beef bouillon cubes. For a shrimp gumbo, I will usually make a shrimp stock out of the shells and the heads. You can also use a chicken stock on this if you like. All right, we're going to put the fire under it. Yeah, go ahead and add some more water. Go ahead and dump it in, that's fine. Alright, we're going to leave it at that for right now. We're going to go ahead and let this get up to a simmer. We'll be back. Okay, we're going to go ahead and add the tomatoes, which contains a lot of water in their cell. We'll do that before we add any more water to see where we're at. The roux with the flour in it is a thickening agent and you really can't tell how thick it's going to be until it starts to simmer and comes up to a boil. So we've added the tomatoes and now, okay now the trick I was telling you earlier about adding the okra if you don't want a slimy gumbo, which hardly anybody does, nobody likes the way that feels in your mouth. So bake it, break it right before browning, and that that definitely helps on having a slimy gumbo or not having a slimy gumbo. That is, that's around two cups. All right, we're gonna stir that in. That too also carry a certain amount of water. So we're gonna bring this up to a simmer, and we'll adjust our water from there, and we'll be back. Okay, while we're waiting on this to come to a simmer, I just added a little bit of thyme. I'm going to throw in a couple of bay leaves. Stir that in. Okay, also to the mix, I'm going to be using some of this uh, Tony Chattery salt-free seasoning. I've been salting and peppering as I go here, so really don't want to add any more salt until we see that we need it, but definitely want some Creole seasoning in here. That's probably about a tablespoon and a half. We're going to start with that. All right. Okay, uh, now I'm going to add these bouillon cubes. I've got five of them. They'll dissolve into the liquid here. Still waiting on this to come to a good simmer to where I can see where I'm at. We'll be back. Okay, we're up to a simmer here. We're going to go ahead and add uh, a few more cups of water. How many cups is it? Almost four. That's almost four cups. Let's just go ahead and pour about two of those in there. By the way, I baked the okra at 350. I didn't really time it. I just uh, took it out right before it began to brown. Oh, this is smelling some kind of good. All right, our meats are fully cooked, and we're not going to add these in until like the last 30 minutes of the cook, and that's going to add a nice smoky flavor to this gumbo. So uh, that's basically it. We're, we're just going to sit here and simmer this. In my opinion, a good gumbo needs to cook for three hours. I'm going to go, like I said, probably two hours, two and a half hours with a lid on, just simmering this. And I might have to adjust it with a little bit more water. Not sure yet. And then uh, it's really a preference thing. You know, if you like it thick, then don't add as much water. I like mine a little on a thin side, but not too thin. And the okra will also thicken it somewhat. And uh, I won't be using filet. Filet is also a thickening agent. And typically, you don't use filet when you're using okra. I have. My mother used to. We did it both. No problem. But... Uh, I'm not going to be using it on this cook. We'll be back. All right, earlier I told you don't throw your fat away that we trimmed off the Boston butt. 
And the reason for that, you want to throw a few pieces right on top of the coals. This is going to generate a different kind of smoke and a different kind of seasoning. This is going to draft right over the Boston butt and add a whole nother layer of flavor, an awesome layer of flavor. Give it a try. Okay, we've been going about six hours on this cook so far. And uh, you can use this eye grill as a standalone thermometer also. I'm going to check probe one. I've got both, both probes put into this... Uh, Boston butt now since I no longer had the rabbit on here. I, I just went ahead and inserted in two different parts. Let's check the other probe. Probe 2, 162. Probe 1, 166. Four degrees difference in the meat at different places. Okay, uh, I don't know why it's flickering on the video. It's not actually flickering. I guess it's some sort of feedback. Anyway, the grill temp is around 220, 225. It fluctuates. I had to keep adjusting that. But anyway, we still probably have a good three, maybe four hours left on this cook if I had to guess. We'll be back. Okay, we've been cooking right at two hours now. We're going to go ahead and add all this meat in. This is all the sausage and the smoked rabbit from earlier. We're going to go ahead and pour this in the mix, stir it all in. Mmm, mm, that's smelling good. Golly. All right. We're going to go probably 30, 45 minutes. We're going to call this done. Just so you know, hand me that lid, Anna. Just so you know, this gumbo is actually for Christmas Eve, which is tomorrow. If you want gumbo to be even that much better, always cook it a day in advance. It gives it time for all the seasonings and everything to marry and really come together. We're going to put this in the fridge after it gets uh, done here in about 45 minutes. We're going to put it in the fridge. Well, we're going to let it come down to like room temperature, put it in the fridge, set overnight. And tomorrow I will we'll resume with the uh, video. But uh, after it's chilled overnight... Any fat left in this is going to come to the surface, and it will be hard, and I will be able to just take it off before we bring this back up to heat. All right, till then. Walk in a little bit more. We're trying to get some light on this. This is this Boston butt. We're up to about 193, 194. It's ping-ponging back and forth on my eye grill thermometer. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up in some foil. For about an hour, hour and a half, then we're going to do some pork pulling. Neat trick coming up. Okay, we just pulled the bone out of this Boston butt, getting ready to do a little pork pulling. Okay, have you ever pulled pork like this? This is a paint stirrer that you can get at Lowe's. And a brand new, washed out, clean bucket. Here we go. Alright, you want a quick, easy way to pull some pork? You can buy this paint stirrer at Lowe's for around five, six bucks. Put it on the end of a drill motor. There you go. Pulled pork, baby. Hey. Okay, it's the next day. This is Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas to everyone. As you can see, I just took this out of the fridge, and there's no fat that came up to the top. I was really expecting it to be from the sausage that was in there, and normally I would just take and, and pull that out before heating this up. We're going to go ahead and put this on a very low heat and bring it up real so slowly and keep it stirred, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, a guy that I work with at my workplace, he's a pipe fitter foreman. His son does competition barbecue, and he, he told me about this recipe the very day that we got out for the holidays. All this is is a cornbread mix. I use the, uh, the Martha White corn, uh, let's see, Martha White buttermilk cornmeal mix. I just follow the directions on that. And all you want to do, this is very simple. I got one large jalapeno. If you can't find the real large ones, use two or one and a half of the smaller ones. Just mix in your jalapeno. 
I have uh, pepper jack cheese. That's probably uh, about four ounces of cheese. Now I probably got about six ounces of the pulled pork that we did last night. All that goes in, mix it in well. I've got my oven preheating up to 450 degrees. I'm going to uh, take my cast iron skillet, which I sprayed with a non-stick spray. I'm going to heat it up about seven, eight minutes. Pull it out, pour this mix in, and let her bake. Okay, we just pulled this stuffed cornbread out of the oven here. It's going to have to cool off just a little bit. Uh, the gumbo is hot, got rice making, and we'll be eating shortly.